So we are here now with Kfir Damari, the co-founder and CEO of Space IL, responsible for the Bereshit lunar mission. Kfir, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. So Bereshit mission really put Israel on the map, I think, in terms of, uh, of space tech and space exploration. The fourth country uh, to visit the moon, alongside United States, Russia, China. Um, can you tell us a little bit now about the next mission, Bereshit 2? So Bereshit uh, 2 really begins and, and begins in the, in the end of uh, Bereshit 1. And we were looking for a unique mission, something that will be interesting, challenging, inspirational, because our work is not just science and engineering, it's also a lot of education and inspiration. And eventually we decided that we're going back to the moon, not with one spacecraft, but with actually three spacecraft. And when we get to the moon, they will separate. Two of them are going to be landers that are going to land on two different locations on the moon, on two sides of the moon, the side that we can see from Earth and the side that we cannot see from Earth. And then the orbiter that took us all the way to the moon uh, will keep orbiting the moon uh, for a few years and it will be a platform both for scientific work and also uh, educational activities. Um, we've already announced that uh, we're going to take different scientific experiments with us, uh, starting from the study of medicine in space and the implication of deep space. So when humanity want to go to Mars, we'll know what medicine we should take with us. Uh, we're going to grow plants on the surface of the moon. We're going to take a special kind of pictures a hyperspectral, uh, uh, with a hyperspectral camera so we can learn about the different um, materials on the surface of the moon. We announced last week uh, that we are partnering uh, with NASA and we're planning to take a NASA experiment with us uh, and also partnering with the DLR, the German uh, space agency, that to was, use their algorithm. That was actually my next question. If you can tell us a little bit about your partnerships because now you know you've really taken it to the next level uh, and now you're also partnering, as you mentioned, with NASA and DLR. So what does that uh, relationship entail? So, so I will say that when we look at partnership, there are different uh, types of partnership. There are more technological partnership, there are scientific partnership, and there is educational partnership. Mm -hmm. From the technical, uh, technical engineering point of view, it's uh, uh, right now we already announced NASA and uh, DLR that I've mentioned. Uh, but uh, I will say that uh, we also have partnership, for example, in the experiments so with an uh, uh, Australian univer university that is leading the growth of plants on the surface of the moon. Uh, we have a few more in line that are like in the works that we hope to announce uh, soon. Um, but from the educational point of view, we are working hard to make sure that when the orbiter will be in place, uh, Children, both from Israel, will be able to connect to the spacecraft, get information and actually take part in the science. But if we're talking about partnership, we're hoping that it will not just be kids from Israel. And we're working, we've met um, the Moroccan uh, uh, space agency and working with the uh, space agencies from United Arab Emirates and, uh, and, and working with hopefully France. So we're working to get more and more countries involved so their children will be able to connect to that orbiter and hopefully we'll see partnership not just between organization and you know and nations and, and companies but that children you know kids from uh, Morocco, UAE, France, the US, Israel and so on will be able to work together on a scientific uh, uh, research and this is for me you know what really excites me in the concept of uh, Absolutely I mean really taking the Abram Accords and everything that we're seeing here really to literally to the next uh, to the next level uh, into outer space um, and I'm you know I'm if we're looking forward and looking to the future, I mean, what really is SpaceIL's vision uh, looking to the future? So SpaceIL vision uh, is, is to inspire the next generation of scientists, engineers, and dreamers through uh, innovative uh, mission in deep space. So this is what we've done in Bereshit 1. This is what we're doing now in Bereshit 2. And what we're aiming to keep on doing. So we believe that uh, if you're trying to engage kids uh, to go and study STEM, uh, you know, you can talk about it, that's one thing, but if you're actually doing it, they get more excited, and if you allow them to do that, that's the most exciting thing. And to get kids in uh, middle school in Bereshit 2, for example, to actually participate in the science, this is, these are the things that we're aiming and, and working for. Uh, and, and not just for middle school, you know, for girls, it's younger ages. So although we are like a 
space startup. We are a nonprofit, and our real goal is the education and the inspiration for the next generation, and this is our focus. Incredible. And when can we expect to see all of this in action? When is, is there already a launch date set for Bereshit 2? So we don't have a launch date. We're actually working now on negotiation regarding the launch. Uh, but we are looking on the second half of 2025. Uh, which is, you know, in space perspective is really, really soon. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and we're working on that. And uh, hopefully uh, in the next few months, we will actually have that, uh, the lunch uh, already signed and uh, we'll be able to uh, talk about the specific dates. All right, Kfir Damari, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us. And we are all looking forward uh, to Bereshit 2's launch. Thank you. To the moon, we to like to To the moon, see. to the moon. <laughs> thank you. Thank you.